What's up, everybody? This is Marshall Lee of DocuJobProjects.com, and this is Thursday. <laughs> um, I have the day off because I need to bring my wife to an appointment that's kind of right in the middle of the day, sort of. Um, so it's kind of hard to uh, get her there. You know, I'd have to take like either a half a day off or a whole day off. Um, so I just took the day off. Um, and so let's see. Um, it gives me an opportunity to work on comics, work on um, whatever I need to work on. Um, so what I'm going to do today, I forgot, I kind of forgot slash didn't know what to write about. <coughs> Excuse me for a um uh for an email list last week I, I didn't actually do one and it's like the only the second weekend and i already failed the week weekly uh email list thing um but you know whatever it is what it is i'm gonna do one i'm gonna i think i'm gonna do one right now uh and um i, I just was busy i had the car thing i think that's really what threw me off on a lot of stuff um I still have the car thing um last yesterday i called them up and they said they tried to start it again and it started fine they drove it around and went fine um and they did you know the elect the computer check or whatever everything was fine um so they really can't do anything until it actually happens and then they can see why it's doing what it does <coughs> um so you know, they're going to mess around with it a little bit today as well. See if they can get it to act up. It's just frustrating. I mean, at this point, I don't know, because it's like, it's like, okay, I want to just grab it and drive it home. But then that's going to happen again when I, on a very inconvenient time and I'm going to have to have it towed and, um, so yeah, and I'm worried about how much money it's going to cost when I do find when they do find out what it is and when they can fix it. Luckily, my buddy um, Robert Johnston of 100 Days of Making Comics fame and a guy who's been awesome. He's always got so much helpful things, you know, for everybody, you know, uh, especially if they're involved like in the hundreds and stuff. It just seems like he's always trying to help people with their website stuff and. Um, you know, just all kinds of things, because he, he does that kind of thing for a living, um, but he was texting me, and he's like, he's trying to help me figure out my car thing, too, you know, so he's just such a helpful dude, so shout out to Robert Johnston, definitely check out his YouTube channel, I'm gonna have to put a lot of links in this video, um, so I'm gonna start writing them down, because I don't want to forget, uh, but, you know, um, he's just an awesome, helpful dude. So anyways, he gave me a couple things I could ask the, the guys at the car place. So I'm going to do that. Um, and then, um, another thing that's really cool is Teresa Del Pilar. Um, if you're, you know, if you've been around for a little while, <clears throat> you know that she's been on my, um, live streams a lot. And, uh, she's just an awesome person as well you know um, part of the hundreds as well and now that the hundred days of making comics thing is finished as far as um you know doing the actual comic and even a lot of the promotion is you know taking its course we i mean we still have only a few days left i think we have seven days left now we have like a week to get to our stretch goal with the poster and to get as far as we can it'd be nice if we got further than the first anthology um that'd be like crazy and awesome that'd be fun and i don't know you'll see but uh you know anyways teresa did the one hour comic challenge what is the one hour comic challenge if you haven't been here for very long which a lot of you haven't thank you once again for all the new people subscribed all, all of you thank you for coming hopefully you dig the stuff i'm doing let me know in the comments uh what you'd like to see from my channel um, and cause I, I do these vlogs and I do live streams with usually with a topic, uh, relating to comics. Um, 
and that's what I tend to do. Um, but there's also other kinds of videos I can do. It's just, it's harder to take the time to do those sometimes. Um, but let me know. Um, but Teresa did the one hour comic challenge. Um, the one hour comic challenge is something that I started earlier in the year, um, where you take one sheet of paper and you make a comic that you fold into eight page, an eight page comic. Um, and it's really cool. There's a playlist. A lot of people have taken up the challenge as well. And Teresa just did hers and it was really cool. I think she's the first person to introduce color into the challenge. Um, <clears throat> if you think this would be easy, you're wrong. This challenge is really hard when you're done. Everybody says when they're done how nerve wracking it is. Like you don't expect it to be so nerve wracking, but it's fun because you, for, you know, say you've never made a comic before and you want to make one, you know, you let's make your first comic you can make in an hour, you know, <laughs> and, and then you can go on and maybe make some more of these, take some more time, maybe take five hours, maybe take a day or something to make one of these little comics. And, um, then maybe work up to mini comics where you're, you're, you know, you know, taking a week or a couple weeks or something. And, you know, you start working up. I mean, that's kind of how I did it, you know, um, as far as me, like now I'm finally getting to the point where I'm going to make a full issue of a comic uh but it took me a long time to get to that point um and really start to feel confident to do that um so i mean i kind of already did but i didn't print it yet i did the corn cob rob one which i think was somewhere around 20 pages maybe 21 i can't remember um but anyways uh Pretty soon, I'm going to finally have my first full issue that I actually print and stuff. I mean, it's going to take probably at the very least to the end of this year, but I have a feeling it won't be till next year before I actually get a full issue done. That'd be awesome if I could like really jam on it and get it done. I mean, I'd have to wait till Lone Wolf is done to even get to that, but um, I don't know. It takes a lot of time to do these things, so... We'll see. <laughs> Anyways, um, so Teresa did the one-hour comic challenge. She did an awesome job. Um, and if you want to do it, definitely check out the videos. I'll put the playlist at the end of this video. Um, and uh, that way you can check out how I did. I actually failed the first time, and then the second time I did it. So um, that's really cool. It was not easy. Trust me, it's not easy. It's a challenge, but it's fun. It's a fun challenge. And you only have to take an hour to do it. Um, so, <clears throat> I'll put a playlist at the end. But right now, let's get to some stories. <laughs> Alright, so first off, in the Werewolves and Unicorns anthology uh, readings for today, um, to kind of highlight some things and... Uh, share with you a little glimpse into what is coming in is the anthology. Peter Palmiotti's The Grift, The Griffin. <laughs> um, or as we like to play around with is Peter's Griffin. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, this, this story is great. I mean, I, I didn't, I almost didn't have to read it because I already read it. Um, he showed me, he showed it to me, um, after it was done just to kind of get um another set of eyes on it and all that um and he showed it to a few different people uh so that's cool and um i enjoyed it then and i read it again and enjoyed it again and it's really nice i love seeing um his inks and i'll tell you one thing um my wife i don't remember i, I must have been flipping through some of the comics and her that comic was the one that stood out to her like she didn't like like we were just quickly flipping through but his inks are so good like it just jumped out and and it does stand out a lot and and there are some amazing there's amazing art in this this uh anthology uh but the stark contrast of the deep dark blacks with the whites in this comic is really it's just it's comic book inking and it's awesome and i love it and i just really enjoy um peter's style and one thing you know we you see like peter's videos and he seems like happy and everything and, and he's you know he's doing his thing you know hanging out with his cats 
Uh, but when you read one of his stories, every time I read one of his stories when he does one, there's always like a depth to it that's really cool. And this was like that as well. And it was a touching story and really fun and really, um, really cool. Um, there's always, I don't know how to explain it, but he's, he's actually really good at storytelling and there's always a, an extra depth to it, you know. Um, I know retro is more of like an adventure thing, so we'll see how that ends up being. Uh, it might be a different take on, on how he does things, I don't know. But yeah, love Peter's work. I'm so happy to be collaborating with him. And uh, he's, he's uh, you know, one of my many partners in crime, you know. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Well, what do you know? Today, the next story I had to read was... The King Predator by Mr. Robert Johnston. <laughs> so it's kind of funny that that just happened because I was already talking about him and needed to link to him and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, check out his YouTube. He's got like some great videos. He's also got free comics you can read on his website and stuff, which is really cool. Um, <clears throat> and it's also funny that he came after Peter because his story as well is very stark dark you know comic book inks but then he added some gradients with the um tone grays and stuff and even a little bit of a half tone in there i noticed too and some textures and stuff which is really cool which i always like that kind of thing um really fun story good storytelling um very clear storytelling uh and great illustrations um i enjoyed watching the process of him make this thing and now i finally get to read it so that was exciting um and the end wasn't what i expected uh there was a little bit of a twist there which i thought was really cool and it's a similar idea that i <coughs> excuse me i actually thought of a similar idea a couple similar ideas uh but i didn't go with it i went with something totally different but um you know it was just cool like that kind of on the same wavelength a little bit there <laughs> But, uh, yeah, um, what can I say? I mean, I just really enjoyed this. I, re I enjoyed the, the, um, the illustration and, uh, like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it was just really cool. I think you guys are going to dig it. Um, and, yeah, Mr. Robert Johnston pulled it off. Uh, so, you know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's the Werewolves and Unicorns anthology that we are kickstarting right now. we got about seven days left. Um, if you want to get it, this is a limited run. There's no, you know, chance of getting this after the Kickstarter, except maybe some of the creators will sell them to you, um... But, you know, not everybody has, like, an online store who's a creator or even wants to sell these online. A lot of people, from the first anthology, it seemed like a lot of people more had it um, for sale so they could have it at conventions and stuff or give it away to their friends and stuff. Um, so, it really, you, if you want to get in on this anthology and get a copy, you got to definitely do it now because once the Kickstarter's over, there's not much chance to get it. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, um, there's 28 creators and definitely click the link below because I don't know where I'm at in the rankings right now. Um, I know I was a few da rungs down or whatever, uh, and I haven't been pushing quite as hard with the links, uh, since then. So, I mean, it is what it is, but if you want to... Be part of deciding what the theme for the next anthology is click my link specifically and um, that might give me a chance to be the one who decides and I will hand that I will have you guys help me decide and also I get a guaranteed spot in the book uh, if that if I win that so that would be really cool other either than other than that, I'm like stumbling over my words here this morning. I think it's still early. I need some more coffee. Um, but yeah, that's that's the anthology, guys. And I hope you check it out. And let's get into the rest of the video. <laughs> All right. So this is actually footage from yesterday. 
Um, but I will be getting back to this comic very shortly. Um, after I do this uh, video, I'm going to compose an email for my email list. Um, and you guys should definitely sign up for the email list on donkeyjawprojects.com. There's a link below um, if you want to read some comics. Um, I have free comics in the DJP Secret Treasury of Comics. And uh, you can download. Right now there's four comics in there. Um, it's an archive that will be added to. Uh, you can download those and read them and check them out. Uh, and yeah, so anyways, <clears throat> I have, um, I have to put an email list out and then, um, you know, I'm going to get back to this comic and get some good work done. I think I'll do a live stream, so that'll be fun. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to talk about something that's come up in a few live streams lately and, um, just different conversations and it's this idea of, um, commitment. Um, I commitment in my opinion is a very important thing um and it's something that you can't necessarily force it um but it's important so you know i think about it in terms of like marriage a lot too you know like you don't necessarily you might not be ready for commitment everybody you know you're not ready until you're ready and, and you might think you're ready for commitment and even even if it's just a dating relationship but you might find out that you know what maybe that's you know you're, you're just not ready yet and a couple years will pass and you might be ready then you know who knows um but it's that's kind of how it's been with me at least with comics um and you know, there was, you know, I was not committed to doing the hundred days of making comics and completing it perfectly the first time around. I just knew in my heart, like, I didn't really admit it to myself, but I wasn't successful. And now in retrospect, I realized I just wasn't that committed at that point to finishing the challenge. I was just kind of doing my own thing. Um, and I haven't known what my focus should be for, it, it took me a long time of trying a million different things to know what to focus on. And I finally come to the point where I know it's comics and I've come to the point where I'm committed to this path of making comics a career. Uh, so previously I would sometimes say, you know, there's no money in comics. It's not worth it. I, I'll always make them because I enjoy them, but I can't make that my main thing. Um, I used to say that kind of thing, but now, you know, there's no plan B. It's comics or bust, you know, and there are ways to make it. And because I know there, because I am committed, I'm going to find a way, you know, you're, if you, if you want to make a, if you want to make a living in comics, but you're not committed you're not going to find a way. But if you're committed, no matter what the industry is looking like, you'll find a way. So that's kind of what I'm all about um, right now. And and I, I just know it like in my heart that this is like the path. This is the way. This is where I'm supposed to be going. This is where I feel the most potential. And I, I just know I can make it happen. I just got to really work hard and be dedicated and keep doing what I'm doing. So anyways, yeah, this is me working on Lone Wolf, which is on Indiegogo, if you want to go check that out. And uh, I'm really enjoying working on this, and um, yeah, I'm committed to making this happen and then working on other pro comic projects. So thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you later. Peace out.